안녕하세요. EBTV의 EBM입니다. 오늘은 The Animal Bedtime Storybook 책을 읽을 거예요. 이 영상은 오디오북으로 쓰는 거로 기억하세요. 오늘은 The Animal's Bedtime Storybook 두 번째 시간이에요. 저번 에피소드 여기 누르세요. The Animal's Bedtime Storybook Um, this book is all about the animals on Noah's Ark and today I'm going to be reading the dog story and the kingfisher story. The kingfisher story. Let's have something peaceful and soothing please after all the excitement we have with the camels, said Noah. What about the kingfishers? Two beautiful birds like yourselves must have a wonderful story to tell. How did you come by your feathers? One of the kingfishers stepped forward, puffed out her chest and looked and took a deep breath. As an old, old story, she began. In the far away and long ago times when mysterious beasts walk the earth, there lived a little brown bird called Fisher with his little brown wife, They had a little brown nest in a little brown bank by the side of a deep brown river filled with sparkling jewel fish. Mrs. Fisher was happy, was a happy little bird, but her husband was always complaining. It's not fair, he would say. I'm the cleverest of the fishing birds, so I should be king. But I haven't got a royal crown as my feathers. Well, just look at them. How can a king wear a cloak of this colour? Mrs. Fisher looked at him. Your, fe your feathers are a very nice brown, dear, she replied. They go with the nest walls, but Fisher complained and complained until one day Mrs. Fisher got fed up. If you're so unhappy, dear, she said, why don't you ask Water Dragon to help you? My old mother said he lives at the bottom of a great lake by the big river. So Fisher caught up some of the prettiest jewel fish for a present and set off to find the water dragon. He flew till his little wings ached and at last he saw the great lake by the big river. He plunged in and flew down until he reached the cave of the very bottom. And there, all curled up, was a very small dragon covered in beautiful rainbow scales. O oh, mighty water dragon, said Fisher, I want to be a king with a royal crown and a royal cloak. Can you help me? And he laid his, and he laid his jaw fish by the dragon's nose. A long, long tongue snaked out and the fish were gone in a gulp. Very nice, said the dragon sleepily. But my power is weak today. Go and see my sister, Earth Dragon. She lives on the Draco Mountain, so Fisher picked a bunch of golden king cups from the lakeside as a present and flew off to Draco Mountain. Soon he had found a cave entrance. It was very dark and he kept bumping into things, but at last he saw a glow of light at the end of a long passage. Stretched out on a grassy hill and covered in spring flowers lay Earth Dragon. She was very large and very beautiful, and King Fisher laid his bunch of king cups in front of her and bowed. O oh, mighty Earth Dragon, he began, I want to be king with a royal crown and a royal cloak. Can you help me? Earth Dragon sniffed, sniffed the king cups and sighed. How pretty, she said. But I can't help you today, because I am making the earth beautiful for springtime. Why don't you try my sister, Air Dragon? She lives in a cloud above the cave of winds. Fisher was very tired and he didn't know where the cave of winds was, so he flew back to his wife. How pleased she was to see him, but Fisher was still unhappy. He had no royal crown and no royal cloak. So Mrs. Fisher knitted him a beautiful scarf of river mist as a present for Air Dragon and, he s and sent him off again. The cave of winds, the cave of the winds is to the north, she said. Also, my old mother always told me. 
Fisher flew northwards until his little wings were as heavy as ice. The winds blew him every about in every direction, but at last he landed on a ledge of a huge cave. cave. About above it hung a pink cloud. Sitting on top of a cloud was an enormous crystal dragon. Fisher laid his scarf of mist by her glittering tail and bowed deeply. Mighty air dragon, he whispered, I want to be a king with a royal crown and a royal cloak. Can you help me? Air dragon twitched the scarf around her neck with a flick of her tail. It's my day off, she snorted. Go and see my brother, fire dragon. I sent him a wish one to... I always sent him wish wanters to him. You'll find him at the top of the last volcano between the sun and the moon. Poor Fisher collected some river gold as a present for Fire Dragon and then he set off again. It was a long, weary way to the top of the last volcano between the sun and the moon and it was very hot when he got there. The giant Fire Dragon lay curled lay curled around a blazing pile of jewels and treasure. Fisher carefully laid his little bag of river gold by the dragon's right paw. Mighty fire dragon, he began, but the dragon interrupted. My brothers and sisters had told me your wish, little Fisher, he growled. But first, you must show us all that you are really brave enough to be the king of all the fisher birds. You must fly to the heart of the volcano and bring back a fire jewel. Only then we will grant you your royal crown and your royal cloak. Fisher shivered as he looked down at the fairy depths of a volcano. He truly wanted to be king, so he opened his wings and plunged downwards. Oh, how hot it was! His feathers burned. At the very bottom, he seized a fire jewel in his beak. It hissed and smoked and he shot upwards and laid it at Fire Dragon's feet. Fire Dragon took the fire jewel and stroked it on Fisher's back. All Fisher dull brown feathers dropped away and in their place appeared a feathered cloak, the colour of shimmering azure water, a crown speckled with flower blue and rich earth brown and a waistcoat of white mist and orange fire. We name you kingfisher roared for earthy earthy airy fairy and watery dragony voices may you rule over the fisher birds forever and so we do to this very day